Hey, good morning. If it's 8 o'clock on Saturday morning, it must be time for This Week in Waukesha. I am your host, Alderman of the Airwaves, Don Paul Brown, coming to you live from the former office from the office of former Alderman Don Paul Brown, also known as the Walk Radio Studios here at 217 Wisconsin Avenue in the NAMI building, right around the corner from Theodore Humans Park, honoring our suffragette heritage here in the suffragette city, also known as Guitar Town USA. And hey, and you just heard my good friends, the Water Boys, playing Fisherman's Blues. And it is uh, for a good reason. We're going to hear a lot of fish songs today because I have some very special guests. Um, they are a husband wife team that owns a very successful. Um, seafood uh, direct-to-consumer business, but they also sell to some chefs. Please join me in saying hello um, to Euro and Adra uh, Kusnarova of uh, Alaska Fresh Salmon. Sa- Hi, guys. Welcome. Hi. Thanks Good morning. For us. <laughs> thanks so much for being here. Um, full disclosure, we met through, in my other life, I manage, and one of the online communities I manage is called the Center for Responsible Seafood and it's, um, it's a growing community of uh, passionate uh, seafood professionals that are also serious about sustainability and re- responsible um, seafood practices. One, for a healthier planet, but two, for healthier humans and addressing um, food insecurity issues. And there's just so many great opportunities um, globally and even here in Wisconsin to develop local economies and um, feed some of our own poor with you know, the best proteins out there. Seafood. So, but um, more than just a successful business, it's an unlikely love story. Uh, these two met in Chicago. Um, now, we'll start with um, Euro. Was um, you, uh, you're from Slovakia? Yes, that's correct. Where he was also uh, he's a broadcaster like myself, broadcasting hockey games. Very cool. Yes, that was that was my previous life. So, Crudy, if you're listening, if we end up getting any hockey deals, I, I got us. I have a hand-picked broadcaster who's, who's got a great radio voice. But so, but how, tell us how you ended up in Alaska and fishing. Well, I had a pretty good job lined up in college, already being a journalist, and I was ready to just be a journalist for the rest of my life. And then uh, my best friend went to Alaska just for the summer as a college student through the J-1 visa work and travel program. And he came back and he said, hey, listen, that's the hardest job you've ever had. It's just the most horrible time. It's just, you know, right. fish and you work with fish 20 hours a day. Then you sleep three hours and you go another 20. And I'm thinking, well, that sounds pretty terrible. Can I go with you next year? And he's like, all right, yeah, let's go. So we went. And the pay is really good, right? Well, the pay was, I mean, good. It was minimum wage at the time. <laughs> so I think I was getting paid seven twenty-five an hour. Okay. But uh, there is a lot of overtime when you work, you know, 100 hours was, a week. Yeah. Yep. And uh, a lot of expenses are covered. Mm. But mostly for me, it was just experience to do something different before I settle into my life of being a journalist. Sure. Well, I ended up going to Cordova and Cordova is right next to the Copper River. So right away from the get-go, I started working with the best salmon in the world, world, literally, and just kind of fell in love with the whole process and with the idea and with just feeding the world high-quality food. And so I just kept coming back every year. Uh, I switched from student visa to temporary work visa, and uh, Mm -hmm. I was living between Slovakia and Alaska, for a few years Man. until I met Adra and okay. switched my schedule a little bit. <laughs> and so this is, as I understand the story, you were coming to Chicago for a trade event. Yes, that's correct. We had a conference because uh, I was recruiting students back in Slovakia and Czech Republic to come work to the fisheries like I did when I okay. started. Neat. And Adra was working for a company that was kind of a facilitator for the visa program, for the J-1 visa program. Okay. So they invited me to this conference as one of the employers. And, yeah, she was the visa sponsor, and we kind of hit it off. Oh, that's terrific. <laughs> so, now, Adri, you grew up here in, is it Brookfield? Yes. Okay. Terrific. And then and you ended up in Chicago, um, kind of like I did, but I didn't come from uh, Wisconsin. But, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, and then... Kind of love at first sight, or uh, but were you a, were you also a seafood fan or aficionado, or I mean, you know, or just you liked it? 
Yeah, I was. I always incorporated seafood in my diet when I was um, debating on what to go into in college. I toyed with nutrition as an option, and I went way the opposite direction into international relations and oh, Spanish cool. linguistics. Yeah. But I I'm happy to be sure. back okay. in the um, or into the nutrition space. And, um, yeah, I was hosting Euro at a conference and I gave him his gift bag, his welcome bag, and the rest was history. (laughs) That's fantastic. So, and now you ended up going back to Alaska with him, right? For a few years. Is that correct? Yes. I got to spend four summers up there Wow! and that was amazing. And I was super privileged and lucky enough. Um, my parents took me on a cruise that they took in Alaska when I was 13 and I just fell in love and, um, my dream job, you know, some kids want to be veterinarians or basketball (laughs) players. I wanted to be a tour guide in Alaska. So I got to live my childhood dream by living there with him. We lived on the coast. We could see sea otters from our living room window. The whole town is just based on, um, generations of fishing traditions okay. and um everyone's livelihood is supported by the health of this fishery and That's harvesting fantastic. the salmon okay and this was a it was a natural or a wild catch fishery or was it aquaculture it was a wild fishery okay yes nice okay interesting so but do you do any business with any aquaculture farms currently oh no you take that okay. we don't so we only focus on product that's coming out of cordova okay Um, and so both copper river sakai and halibut that we sell or copper river coho those are all wild fish okay uh when you say aquaculture if you mean fish farms those are per se right those are not legal in alaska Mm. so there is no farms there is a form of aquaculture up there called hatcheries but that's a a whole different story okay yeah but our fish are all wild cod okay from Prince William Sound and the sure. Copper River fishing regions nice. in South Central wow. Alaska. That's neat. And would you live there the whole year or just live there seasonally like you were doing before um, you and Adrian met? We were there just seasonally. Okay. So. And then you come back here to the Midwest? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then when did you get the idea of like um, working out of the Milwaukee area and, and bringing it in? We were bringing so much fish back at the end of each season for our friends and family. Like we would check our luggage at the Anchorage airport and then we would check a couple 50 pound boxes of Uh seafood and we were running out of it so quickly. Um, We decided we were having dinner up north at the Big Easel at our friend's place and Euro said, I really want to start this business. And it like, you know, we had this like alive feeling about it. And so we put together Alaska Fresh and started with friends and family as our customers. And it's just been growing over the last five years. And especially with the pandemic, with everyone cooking at home more. Um, And then people just trying to get healthier in general. Like I have a lot of customers say, oh, my doctor told me I should eat more fish. Um, Mm. The business has been growing, which has been great. Yeah. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was at... um target with my wife yesterday doing some last second shopping for our um son's birthday evan hope you're not listening no but uh (laughs) but there is a seafood section there now at target now i know costco's had one and i've heard good things and and some mixed reviews but mostly good things but then i I mentioned my wife like hey there's a seafood section and right away she's just like that's probably gross or it's probably like Mm. and i know there's still that impression here in the mainland or as you call the lower 48 where people worry about the um the food service, you know, the safety of eating fish. And I don't buy into that just so you know, but I just, I know it's something to talk about. Um, Right. And the, the freshness of it. And, you know, when people think of the word fresh, they think of um, something, and especially with seafood, they think of something that's thawed and that's in the deli case. But when you are working with um, any, coastal seafood or any seafood in general and you're not near the area right. where it's from you, may not. you definitely want to sure, have sure. frozen okay. seafood yeah. and i apologize I, my timing's a little messed up we're um well actually no we do have another minute so, so thank you connor sorry about that oh, but, okay so yeah no worries. yeah go ahead finish yeah your so thoughts. Sorry about our that. um what we sell we sell smoked salmon and then we also have frozen salmon and halibut and the the 
um, the reason that it's frozen is because it maintains its um, color, the nutrients, yeah, sure. the flavor. And so I always tell my customers when you're eating seafood from the coast, you want to make sure it's frozen. Sure. Unless you're having it flown in. And now you're making before. me hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, well, stick around because we want to hear more about this. And um, this week in Watch Shot continues with Euro and Deidre uh, Kuznarova of Alaska Fresh Salmon. Do not go away. He's a fisherman, just like his father. Even though his daddy told him, go to college, work in an office, get off the water. Be a doctor, or a lawyer, or a banker. And now he's got a boat and a permit. Salt water claims the blood in your veins. Okay, we're back this week in Waukesha with our very special guest. Uh, Adra and Ural Kusnarova of Alaska Fresh Salmon. And this was actually, I joke around that all these artists are my friends. Although I really do believe Mike Scott and the Water Boys are my friends. But... Mike Mickelson here, the artist of The Fisherman, um, is actually a friend of the Kusnarovas. How did that happen? Well, what's really cool about living in a small Alaskan fishing community yeah. is you get to know everybody Cool. after living there for some time. And um, we met our fisherwoman, Kim Menster, who fishes our smoked coho. We met her through that. Mike Mickelson's mom, who run, her name is Bell Mc, Reverend Bell Mickelson, and she runs a bluegrass camp in Cordova. Mm. So while Euro was working his 24 hour cool shifts around the fish, <laughs> yeah. I was learning how to play guitar. And then I met Kim and we had a little concert together and now we're selling her fish. I love it. And you're giving me an idea for a festival. Yeah. <laughs> so. Seafood and bluegrass, right? Now. Yep. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. I love it. Oh, that's fantastic. And um, you, know, you mentioned coho because I, I remember I was just reading an article recently that in um, I believe it's the Russian River there in like Sonoma or like there like by in wine country that the coho is under a threat because of the uh, I forget what's uh, the pines for one because that impacts the the river. Mm-hmm. But there's some erosion. There's some other environment, and that fire like really hurt. The co- and so I didn't know that there were coho species in Alaska, so that's probably a, a bodes yeah. well for you, I think, if you... Because what's your... I know you sell a lot here in the Milwaukee area, but your your base is... I think you mentioned you're in other... You, you, you ship to other cities to some customers. Yeah, there. we do pop-ups at farmer's markets here in Menominee Falls, Brookfield, and West Bend. Right. But primarily, we ship nationwide. Um, you know, our goal is to get seafood and this good protein into seafood deserts as we call them Mm. where people don't have access to high quality fish um and i forgot what the original question was that you just about about, um oh the coho like said like that's an area that's really been disrupted but does that create an opportunity for you you might be able to serve customers that um if that's a favorite you know type of salmon yeah definitely some of our customers go for coho only over the sockeye because it's a little bit milder um it's the last salmon that runs there's five types of salmon that run in the area where we source our fish and it's it's the fall varietal um a lot of coho and overall salmon populations um in the lower 48 have been affected by um damming of the rivers and actually aldo leopold who was a conservationist who um i believe he was born in wisconsin he has strong ties to wisconsin i believe yeah his um uh, grandson and his wife or maybe granddaughter and her husband are very involved with salmon conservation in Oregon so like oh, the wow. Wisconsin root legacy continues yeah, out that. west and Good. Um, yeah there's a lot to be done with salmon conservation which is why we're also really excited to be in the space of selling wild Alaskan sure. salmon because a okay. portion of our purchases our customers purchases goes to the um, wild salmon center in right. Cordova and to the Copper River watershed project which helps remove dams and give more pathways to salmon fry to get to their spawning grounds fantastic I love that 
And so, and I, I, it's funny, I've been reading a lot about seafood, as you know, with my work with TCRS, that um, I know that there was an effort to um, bring salmon into the Great Lakes years, like there's this reappearance of owl lives, Mm -hmm. like lying up, lying dead on the beach. (laughs) That's actually a a good sign because of, um, uh, I think the salmon was brought in to bring, keep the owl life population down because it was eating up some of the other native some of those other species were deteriorating. So back in the 50s, they thought it would be a good sustainable practice. But I think they got, after a while, like it, it worked against the salmon or something like that. But now that there's these owl wives showing up, it means that there's more salmon. And it's, would you ever source salmon from the Great Lakes? Um, I know you said it's the best, you know, you're, as Euro mentioned, the best, you have access to the best salmon in the world. Right. You're going to have a market for that. But um, is there any appeal for any of like the, the local or regional regional um, species. So, local and regional species are one thing. Mm-hmm. Salmon from Lake Michigan, in my opinion, is a completely different thing. Okay. Uh, salmon, wild salmon, let's say in Alaska, yeah, is a species that lives, is born in the river, right? Swims down the river, sure. Lives in the ocean, swims thousands of miles, okay. In you know, the salt water of the sure. ocean sure. and then comes back to the exact same river, dies over there. Wow. So that's the life cycle of the top quality salmon. Okay. That's how the salmon gets strong. That's how sure. it gets all the nutrients right. because when it's coming back to the river, it stops eating before yeah. it en- enters the fresh water. So sure. it really needs to build up good muscle, good uh, fat content. Right. That's where all the omega-3 fatty acids are coming from, yes. from the fat content yeah. and it has to be strong to survive this yeah. sure. this long journey back yeah. up to the creek. Yep. The salmon that lives in Lake Michigan, it's you know, eats whatever is in Lake Michigan. It lives in the water of Lake Michigan. Yeah. And uh it doesn't need to build up strong Got fat it. content or good muscles. So the the meat quality, the flavor, it's become the one nutrients. Of those crazy mainland Americans, right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> no, I, I did. I <laughs> so anyway, so no, I don't think we would uh, go the route of sourcing salmon from Lake Michigan. Okay, sure, that's fair. So I want to jump back to the the question, the kind of the the prejudice about fish and seafood is not being like safe handling or say. And I remember uh, I shared a video with you uh, from. George Chamberlain, president of TCRS, and it was um, the video was produced by Global Seafood Advocate, who you know their BAP certification. They make sure that, uh, but George had cited a study that was done by the CDC, and it was a it was like a span of like five years. It wasn't that long ago, but there were twenty six thousand foodborne cases in the U.S. and like I forget the exact word, but the majority of them were for, from land based proteins, and then like a little more than a third of them were from plant based proteins. And then like seven to nine percent, a very small percentage, were from fish and seafood. And that didn't surprise me having worked in the restaurant business. But, you know, would would you, you know, again, since you're on the sales, the commercial side of this, like, you know, that's that's news you can use, right, in terms of uh, educating your public, correct? Your your target audience? Well, fish is uh, the fastest spoiling animal protein there is right fish goes bad the quickest sure but uh upside is fish really lets you know that it's going bad (laughs) yeah Yeah. like you can tell from a mile away if you have a bad fish in your fridge you can really smell it sure so you can tell and just kind of keep yourself safe that way but also because it is a protein that goes bad so quickly the regulations and the oversight must so be much, much, much stronger yeah. and much, much better. And in Alaska, it's uh, surprisingly easy to do that because there is not that many sure. places that do process the seafood. So okay. uh, it's, in short, yeah. seafood from Alaska is very safe. And like Adriel was saying before, it's keeping it frozen what's yeah. keeping it safe. Absolutely. And it's what's keeping yep. it kind of fresh. Oh, yeah. Because all the nutrients and everything stays in as long as you keep it fresh, Sounds frozen. Okay. Hey, we're going to go to another break, but we have much more to talk about with Adra and Euro Kusnarova of Alaska Fresh Salmon out of Menominee Falls. But they want to they wanna tell the Waukesha world why they should be eating more fish and seafood. So stick around. This Week in Waukesha now he's continues. Now he's paying for a boat and permit. Salt 
water claims the blood in your veins The springtime comes and the ocean calls again You just can't ignore the call Fish to catch and gear to haul This week on Watch Shine, you're listening to Iggy Pop. This is a film, and it's actually about fish, right, Euro? You picked this as your pick. Yeah, there is a fish mentioned at the end of the song, and it's a. If anybody wants to listen to the whole song, I don't want to ruin the surprise. But uh, when I was going to Alaska my first time, a friend of mine made me a mixtape to listen to, and this was one of the songs. And I didn't get to listen to it the whole summer because I was so busy. Yeah. And then after the summer i was listening to this song after working with fish 20 hours a day for three months straight and i'm obviously exaggerating the 20 hours but long long days long weeks and when this song came up and the ending came around i was really i almost died laughing so great song highly recommend that's good i I like a lot of iggy pop but um yeah you know it's funny because i I just thought of another a really bizarre song uh, by van morrison it's from one of his later albums and um it was called In the Days Before Rock and Roll. And it was like this kind of like lost innocence or childhood. And like it's almost like the chorus line, but he, he, he doesn't he speaks, he doesn't sing it, but he keeps saying, They let the goldfish go. And it's just mm. bizarre. It's such wow, a weird like that sounds sad. It's sad, but it's kind of like it, the the melody is more of a little bit more kind of happier. Um it, it's it's worth a listen. It's it's a pretty bizarre song, but I, I um I'm just picturing a goldfish going down a toilet, but maybe they let it go. No, I think they meant it like, yeah, because that's what it was. It was just about like, it was about because these these kids were growing up and that's what it was. Yeah, so it's kind of a happy thing. But but I remember I used to manage this Irish pub in Chicago where you guys met. And closing time was always tough getting people out. We'd have closing songs so people would get the idea. But these two doormen just started going around. And you knew who the doormen were because they wore aprons around their waist. And um, they just started chanting, just let the goldfish go. Oh. And I had no idea what they were saying. And I think it kind of creeped people out, so they left. But <laughs> it was a line from that song. And it was just about, you know, like I said, growing up and moving on. And I think that, that was kind of their little subtle hint to these guys. That's a good <laughs> tactic believe, yeah. to get people so, out. Very interesting. Yes, yes. <laughs> but, but I digress. Let's talk uh, Alaska fresh salmon and fish and seafood. And so... I have to say, and I, I love our farmer's market, but I know you guys had applied and that you were turned down, correct? Yes, because we are not, we don't have a Wisconsin product. So there's mm, okay. there's a big push within the um, Alaskan seafood retailer community and other um, coastal seafood retailers to really rethink of this idea as local, the FDA uh, defines local as something produced within 400 miles. But all of the fish that comes out of Alaska and, and other coastal communities, yeah. um, it, it can't all be consumed by everyone in right. Alaska. There's such yeah. a bigger market okay. out there. So um, what, what we're trying to advocate for is, you know, what's healthy protein, what's wild food. It's produced by local artisans. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't come here, you know, in the can from Chicken of the Sea or like one or you know one of the bigger names, one of the bigger like brands like Kraft or um, exactly. Gordons or and nothing against them; those are good product, but it's not not what you guys are bringing to the table. Yeah, the fish is filleted by hand; it's caught by hand. Each fish is bled by hand. You know, these are fishermen that are going out there, not on big um, ocean trawlers, which comb the bottom of the ocean floor and take up everything in its path it's one person on a boat picking each fish out of out of one net so um also like keeping in mind the artisanal production processes that come along with the food those are very few hands i bet right Mm -hmm. so and And also alaska is kind of a poster child for sustainable fisheries the way the fishing is regulated there Uh could really be a great example for other 
areas where, I mean, you know, everybody has their issues, but Alaska has really been very good and very strict and regulations are surprisingly followed over there and it's it's yeah. been working. Sure. And you had asked about, you know, if we would consider selling um, salmon from Lake Michigan and um, something that I just thought of is that um, now, you know, there's only a handful of commercial fisheries left on the Lake Michigan coast. Really? Because they've collapsed due to, mm. um, you know, um, factories came in and workers went away from those jobs. St. So Lawrence water, Seaway. Yeah, the water quality has declined. So, yeah. you know, even if um, people did want to eat local salmon, there's, there's not enough of that to go around. So sure. as our food systems change we also right. need to rethink what yeah what local really means in your professional opinion is there hope for the great lakes that we may not just salmon but maybe other quality species that we may be able to there may be an abundance of those again i certainly think so as long as the epa still gets robust funding and um we still you know milwaukee has a great infrastructure with um programs to improve water quality sure. and um we are we do have some super fund sites around the great lakes meaning that um there is cleanup that is needed and so there is government funding coming in i think as long as that infrastructure is built up and and sure. um as people continue be, to become more educated about it right. and as the awareness grows i think there's definitely hope great yeah because you know the other thing too is you know fun little fact is that our inland bodies of water represent less than 2% of the Earth's surface, yet 51% of the world's species come from these inland bodies of water. Is there opportunity for, for economic development uh, for you know some of these local economies here, especially when you get maybe in some of the more impoverished areas or maybe in our First Nations, um, as well as you know career opportunities to go along with them? I think so, yeah. I think it's a matter of um, young people being exposed so the practices and people just taking back the land and taking back the practices from big agriculture or big aquaculture and um, learning learning the trade and learning mm. how to do that. Sure. And that might be a challenge a little bit because sure. commercial fishing, that's not a glamorous job. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not like you're sitting in the office and you're getting paid yeah. a lot of money. You can still be very <laughs> like successful. <me>. <laughs> You can still be very successful when you're a commercial fisherman, sure. but you work very hard to make that happen. It's an actual, sure. you really have to apply yourself. And yeah. a lot of the fishermen up there, by up there I mean in Alaska, it's a second, third generation. Right. They learn the trade from their ancestors, from yeah. their fathers. People still do and, come from the lower 48 yeah. to do it, but it's it's kind of something that's inherited up and there. that includes fisherwomen too, correct? Fisherwomen as yeah. well. Yes. So that's a great... Big debate on this naming sure. convention. Yeah. Fisher folk, fisher people. Sure. Yeah. Fishermen, mm -hmm. fisherwomen. So... I, I do know some women that they're fine with being called fishermen. Like they're the whole. They're, but the idea that there's more, it seems there's more opportunities. I, I know some women professionals. I know on the aquaculture side, as well as on the uh, wild catch side, that want to uh, promote more opportunities for for. Um, for women and, and for diverse groups and so on. And, and, I, and I think there's a real opportunity when you, when you consider, especially with you guys in Alaska and, and you know, with the oceans at, there's just so many opportunities to address food insecurity around the world, as well as some real, some more sustainable solutions. And so again, that's why we're glad to have a Milwaukee based uh, company, an entrepreneurial venture, a mom and pop shop that's bringing in again, the best salmon in the world, um, you know, right, right here in, uh, Cream City. So I take my hat off to you. So I'm, oh, absolutely. What is what are some of the kind of the things you want to leave with um, with our audience here, especially in Waukesha, um, about your company and about um, you know having more of a blue diet, if you will. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, I mean, the ideal amount of fish 
Um, I just spoke with Dr. Whitcomb out of Brookfield, who's a longevity Hello. expert, and sure. he said that we're experiencing, um, as humans, salmon deficit disorder, and I will widen that to seafood deficit disorder. We're not getting enough omega-3 fatty acids, yeah. and so as much as people can incorporate fish into their diet, it's super sure. important. Um, you can find us at alaskafreshsalmon.com, yeah. and you can also find us on social media at at Alaska Fresh Salmon. And I, I think one of the most important things I would like to leave off with is just know your source. Like, don't be afraid to ask your server or your butcher or wherever you're getting your fish. You know yeah. your source. Sure. Hey, we do have more time with my friends, the, the Kusnerovas. And um, be happy to take a drug test, too. I'm clean. I'm sober as a judge. But, um, <laughs> hey, lots more to talk about in our final segment. This Week in Waukesha continues in all laughs directed at me, your host, Tom Brown. Stick around. This week in Waukesha, you're listening to one of my favorite bands from the early 80s, Split Ends, with six months in a leaky boat. The fun part's coming up, and uh, you have a lot of uh, maritime songs in honor of our special guest, who, um, so, Adra and Euro, and I guess I've been saying the surname somewhat incorrectly. I have it half right, but I don't. So, uh, Euro, you want to give tell us the semantics here, this is important. Yes, so my name is Jero Kushnir, and my wife Adra, she's Adra Kushnirova, and the ova is added in Slavic languages to differentiate female and male names. And when we got married, we didn't have the option to both have the name Kushnir, but she decided to keep uh, or to make it Kushnirova. So it's A, cool, it looks like a secret agent, and B, you know, we were living in Cordova, Alaska at the time, so it was right. like Kushnirova from Cordova. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It was. Someone asked me, oh, it's ova because you have ovaries. And I was like, all right, let's <laughs> think about it. Okay. Connor's covering it. Yeah, I was going to max out the mic right, right there if I try. So we'll pause for a moment so we can hear the best part of the song here again. <laughs> Split answer. My friends from New Zealand, the Finn Brothers. I don't show. You digging it, Connor? You like this? Yeah. Just spent six months in the leaky boat. I'm totally gonna make a fish playlist now. And put this on there. All right, you can turn it off now. Thanks, Connor. <laughs> so, but you haven't had too many problems with leaky boats, right? With your, with your Levi, or when you were any uh, any accidents like that in Alaska? Oh, constantly. Yes, it's uh when I was saying it's a hard job, yeah. I really meant it. While I was working there, I'm going to say on average probably one person died every year wow. or every couple of years out of this maybe 500 boat fleet. Right. For plethora of reasons. Sure. Sometimes it is a leaky boat that just sinks. Yeah. Uh sometimes and this is probably the most heartbreaking story, a guy just lost a small part of his boat and it was you know floating away uh, so he took his kayak to go and get it yeah. and the current was just too strong and he uh, couldn't make it back to his boat and there were boats inside sure. he couldn't he could see all the boats yeah, around yeah. but nobody could hear him it's the ocean uh, nobody could see him because he's too sure, small sure. and it got dark and he got flipped on the uh, kayak and that was it for him yeah. yeah yeah our customers always ask at the farmers markets are you catching the fish and my answer is i'm not I'm not brave enough. I'm not that brave. And you really have to yeah. just be sure. fearless to be yeah. out there. Sure. Dealing with I mean, cause you're, yeah. 10, 15 foot swells, the currents. Um, a lot of times people miss out on fishing because they get stuck on a sandbar because they're uh, new and they're still like figuring out how to read the tide charts. And yeah. yeah, it's a dangerous job. You have to be your own mechanic. You have to... Um, 
just heed mother you know mother nature's in charge yeah. when you're out there sure for sure wow that's something but the yield seems to be really high though huh but especially based on what what you got your your business i understand you have a big order coming in tomorrow right well we do have our uh, copper river sockeye supply come in well tomorrow we're recording now so this is yeah. it's not tomorrow anymore yeah. uh, we already have it oh, right, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> when this is aired yeah so that's great but uh yeah no it's a you know, a lot of people fall in love with the fishing up there, but you can hit some really skinny ears. And yeah. people look at the price tag of wild Alaskan fish mm. and think like, oh, my God, it's so much money. But uh, everybody who has ever seen any part of this yeah. can realize like, OK, you pay for all sure. this. You pay for the sustainability. There is yeah. only so much that goes to the market. Yeah. You pay for the quality of people really picking it out hand by, right. you know, so there's an abundance. one by one. There's no, like, they don't allow any of the, because of the Alaskan regulations, like, we don't have to worry about that body of water just getting tapped out like other bodies of water, like, around the world, or, like, in the case of the Great Lakes, you don't have to worry about zebra mussels or ocean-going vessels that are coming into that. Correct. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give you an example. This was about... Five years ago, 27, 2018, I think, uh, four years ago, sure. uh, the season was absolutely terrible. There is right. almost no fish. So what happens at that time, the regulating body, Alaskan Department of Fish and Games, yeah. shuts down the fishing. So mm. for the yeah. people up there, that's their livelihood. That's all sure. they do. Right. But the sustainability, the survival of the river comes first. So when there is not enough fish, there is just no fishing. Yeah. And that year there was no fishing for weeks maybe even a couple months in the sure. area which is devastating for the fishermen yeah who have loans and it's a very expensive yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, business to get into it's like being a farmer but yeah. hey you know too bad so sad uh yeah. the fish come first the sustainability yeah. and the survival comes first and sure enough you know now we have a good season again you know four years four years later and sure. it's uh it's going up and down yeah. like everything in nature. In situations but okay. like that are like local. Are they allowed to at least maybe fish for themselves, like to, just for to sustain themselves? Or I mean, is there kind of checks yes. and balances on that? Yes, there is. Uh, so there is commercial fishing, and then there is. Uh, oh my God! Now I'm blanking on the subsistence. name. Subsistence, subsistence fishing. Yeah, yes, I mean. absolutely. Yes, so the locals yeah. do get. They that's get good. their own. They get their own hours yeah. when they okay. they go to the fishing grounds and catch limited amount of right, fish. Right. I think it's uh, ten fish a day. Sure. They can get. Okay. And also, the local native community can go out fishing before um, everybody else. Okay. Whether it's subsistence sure. or commercial. That's great. So, hey, now, jumping back here to the market in your market, it, it sounds like because you're you're doing online business that you, you do have a discriminating and educated customer base that knows what they're looking for and they, they may have found you from Google or wherever, but um, you know, would you say that's a fair amount of your base, like a, of your you know, your regular customer base? Yeah, it's people who have heard of Copper River either from living on the West Coast or having ties to Alaska or, um, you know, seeing it on restaurant menus and they're specifically seeking it out nice. or they've chatted with us and learned about it or they've tasted it and, yeah. re and realized. So they're out there and they're growing, right? I mean, we, we do get some converts that come in. Absolutely. So, terrific. Well, I love to hear that. And so, hey, and as I said in my last segment, I know I jumped the gun, but I, I definitely want to have you guys on the show again because we have so much more to talk about. Yeah. And uh, kind of how, how much time we have right now? Uh, we got about a minute. Got about a minute. Mm -hmm. so, but, so, yeah, any other last um, uh, kind of bits of advice for people out there on why they should try uh, Alaskan salmon and why they should give a alaskafreshsalmon.com, by the way, right? I got that right. Alaskafreshsalmon.com. Yes. That's um, correct. I would say... Don't be scared of the fish just because it's a little bit more expensive uh, and it's like a top level best fish in the world. Don't be scared of it. It doesn't require really any skills in the kitchen. It can be done in any way. It's super simple. All you need is salt and some heat, whether it's fire or your oven, and you're going to have a fantastic meal that's good and good for you. That it's sounds great. As easy as a frozen pizza. All right. So let me get this. So, uh, Adra Kusnerova, Euro Kushner. Did I do that right? Kushner. 
So yeah. no relation Perfect. to Jared Kushner. Um, <laughs> hey, <laughs> no, not so, that I know of. Adrian Euro from Alaska Fresh Salmon. Thanks so much for being um, my guest today. I look forward to um, seeing you again uh, very soon. And uh, to learn more, also, yeah, go to alaskafreshsalmon.com, but also go to responsibleseafood.org to learn more about sustainable fish and uh, some great vendors like Alaska Fresh Salmon uh, to get your fish and seafood from. And uh, go blue. Uh, Thanks again uh, for joining us this week in Waukesha, a special edition. And remember, safety is everyone's responsibility, and I look forward to seeing you next week at 8. Until then, see ya!